What is going on guys, Pat in the shop. In the moment, a lot of you guys have been waiting for the Rhodes Lifters Dino Test. Let's check it out. The Rhodes Lifters. Uh, this is a video uh, that I've been wanting to do for a while. A lot of you guys have been wanting to see this, but this ro these Rhodes Lifters are very old school. This is the original variable valve timing. These lifters collapse at idle. Um, to give you more vacuum, uh, more torque supposedly, and then fully recover to give you tons of top end power. Um, I posted a video about this a while back and we did some testing uh, to, to see if, number one, did we get more vacuum? And uh, we sure did. I, we went from 11 inches of vacuum at idle on this 406 here to 15 inches of vacuum at idle at the same RPM, ignition timing, everything. The crazy part about it, and I posted a video about this on my Instagram, a back to back, this video has gotten over a million views with a lot of people hating on the Rhodes lifters for the fact that they totally cha it totally changed the characteristic characteristics of the idle. Uh, that it goes from a real choppy muscle car sounding to totally smoothing it out. So we know the idle side of these things work, okay? So uh, they do increase vacuum as they claim. Um, they do change the cr cranking compression. They change the sound of the idle, it gets a lot more mild. Um, and they also uh, tick a little bit. And that's a big kind of a complaint that a lot of people talk about is they sound almost like a sewing machine, sort of to a solid lifter sort of sound. Uh, so they're not as quiet as a hydraulic lifter and I think that has a lot to do with the plunging and how the valve is closing. You get a bit of a valve train noise. It's not a lash thing. I think it's just, um, it's kind of an inherent noise of the, the lifter doing its thing. Um, but here's the thing, okay? On the internet, you're going to read a lot about these Rhodes lifters. And again, these are the original Rhodes lifters. These are the original design, not the VMAX. They have a, a newer design that I haven't tried yet that's supposedly uh, even better and come on later as far as RPM and a little bit more adjustable. So these are the original look, the Rhodes lifter design, the variable duration lifter. The claim is, um, and a lot of the big guys have talked about this too, uh, that they don't recover from the the collapsing. So throughout the whole pole, especially at top end, you're gonna be down on power because that lifter doesn't actually recover and it doesn't become as good as a regular hydraulic lifter. So when we tested this 406, and if you wanna know more about this 406, go back on the previous video, but this 406 with a Delco, standard Delco lifter, <clears throat> this is your regular hydraulic lifter, it made 426 horsepower, at uh, 5,200 RPM and uh, 477 or, uh, foot pounds of torque at 3,800. This is a real basic engine, um, uh, you know, basically a, a stockish bottom end 406 dish pistons, low compression. So it's not a high revving engine, but I wanted to see if we were gonna notice swapping between those lifters on the dyno. And these dyno tests were done almost with like less than an hour apart from when we tore, did our baseline, tore it down and then redid the dyno test uh, with the different lifters. Less than an hour apart and water temperature, oil temperature, everything was tried, we tried our best to kind of keep everything the same. the moment of truth are Delco lifters versus our Rhodes lifters and uh, let's throw up the comparison graph so you guys can see the difference so to my surprise down low where I thought the Rhodes lifters would make more power uh, you know 3,000 to maybe 3,500 the power is almost identical um, this tells me that the lifter is pumped up at that point so as you go up in the graph you can see almost identical until we get to about 4,800. 
the peak numbers were consistently slightly higher with the rose lifters. We're talking a couple foot pounds, but between 4,800 and about 51, 5,200, uh, the power was about three to five foot pounds down with the rose lifters. Not, it's very, very similar. You could almost say it's a, it could be just a dyno variance, but we found it was just consistent between multiple poles that it was down in that area. Uh, but then the, the lifter, uh, the Rhodes Lifter recovers, makes about the same peak horsepower, uh, but at about 100 RPM more. So very, very similar. I was expecting to maybe see, again, maybe a little bit more torque down low, because that way the lifter acts, uh, almost like advancing the camshaft, and then maybe slightly less power at the very top. It kind of had this dip near the middle top, but only a few foot pounds and a few horsepower, and then kind of recovered. So it was very interesting the results, uh, how close these two lifters were considering how different they act at idle. So just so a lot of you guys are gonna wonder, we ran this thing with 2050 oil. Some guys will claim that uh, the oil viscosity will change how fast the lifter comes on and maybe how fast it bleeds down. We ran this with 2050 oil. I did bring 1040 to try, but we ran out of time. It was a bit of a dyno uh, crunch day because we were doing two engines with multiple tests. Um, and by the time we would put the 1040 in and get it up to operating time, so it was ran on 2050. Uh, Rhodes claims that oil pressure doesn't have a huge effect on it. It has to do more with with the, the just the timing. That's the engine, as the RPM comes up, the lifter doesn't have enough time to bleed down. Uh, so I can see maybe viscosity will play a little bit more role in that too. But again, this is the result on this motor. Other motors might be different. Um, what I want to try is maybe a higher revving engine. So what this kind of opens the door up to, especially guys running, um, you know, classes where you have to have enough vacuum at idle, like uh, you have to have, meet a certain uh, vacuum number. This allows those guys to run a bigger cam. So we're comparing lifters on the same camshaft, but does this open up a whole nother, uh, door where you could run a bigger camshaft as long as you have the compression and, and head to support it. So now you can have the same idle vacuum as a smaller camshaft, but then extend the RPM range because you have this variable duration lifter. The results here says we could probably do that. So we might not be done testing these types of lifters now that I've seen these results. So I'm actually intrigued and in, in, in actually more curious than ever uh, with these results because I was actually expecting them not to be as good as they are. So I'm, I'm really interested in that. I was crazy enough to break both sets of lifters in on one camshaft, the same camshaft, so the cam was never changed, and we had no problems with break-in and both successful break-in with both sets of lifters with no issues. So um, comment below if you have any questions or, or comments about this. Uh, don't forget to hit that like, subscribe button. There's a lot of guys that watch the videos and they don't subscribe, so please subscribe because it helps me you know, uh, know what you guys are liking and, and continue to make these kind of videos um, and pay for the dyno time. So please do that. Uh, and again, uh, any, any kind of comments or, or future uh, things you want to see, uh, comment below and uh, I will take a look at that. So thanks guys.